William Bushnell Osborne was born in Rochester, New York in 1884 and received a degree from Williams College before getting his Master of Forestry degree from Yale in 1909. He started in forestry in Bangor, Maine before joining the Forest Service and being assigned to Oregon in 1909. With the exception of six months off for World War I, he was with the Forest Service for 44 years. One of his first projects was spending two years walking the woods of the Mount Hood, Santiam, and Deschutes forests and creating the first half-inch to one-mile detailed national forest map. In 1910 and 11, he planned and installed the first fire lookout in the Northwest. And in 1911 and 12, he produced the first trigonometrically controlled national forest map to increase the efficiency of the lookout system. This is William Osborne's very first firefinder. You just pivot the center pivoting sights. You look through here and out through the crosshairs. And you read your azimuth reading over here for your fire that would be out that direction. Your lookout is in the center of the room. He developed this in 1913 and they produced uh, only a few of them and then they changed the model. This is uh, William B. Osborne's second model of the Firefinder. came out in 1915 and it uh, uses the 360 degree reading and the vertical angle which was new and you just look through a zero power rifle scope to pinpoint the fire. And they're a very simple instrument to operate. They're on a sliding table so that you can avoid the, the corners of the building. This is the 1917 version of the Osborne Firefinder and it's uh, quite a bit different than the earlier two versions of 1913 and 1915. They went to the 24 inch base, heavy iron. The sights are totally different. You look through the peep sight, you don't have the capability of a vertical reading yet. You just have the, the horizontal azimuth reading. Uh, this is a 1934 Osborne Firefinder. It's also capable of giving a vertical angle reading, which the uh, panoramic photographs were a terrific help back in the 1930s to pinpoint a fire. Bush started to use panoramic photos to enhance the accuracy of his finder as early as the late teens, but was never satisfied with their performance. So by 1927, he began designing his own. His camera went into use in 1931, taking 360-degree photos in three 120-degree exposures. It has a cast aluminum body with a curved film plane that uses six-inch roll film with a paper backing. The film plane has degree marks and registration holes that allow the combined images to be synchronized with the Osborne Firefinder. The camera used a series of brass fan blades to vary the exposure time of the rotating lens, with the wider blades offering the greatest resistance and thus the slowest exposure time. The camera and its transit base are precisely graduated as to azimuth and vertical angles. The photo recording transit, as it was known, complete with its base and tripod, weighed almost 50 pounds. And from 1933 to 1935, it was hauled to the tops of 800 lookouts throughout the Northwest. The combined Osborne panoramic photos and firefinders remained in wide use, especially in the Northwest, until the 1980s.